Good morning. Thank you, Tiger. Good morning, Joe and <laughs> Tiger and Brian and Good morning. Mark Robbins. The gang's all here. So let's get started. This is the regular scheduled Selections Advisory Committee on Buildings and Infrastructure meeting on what is today? Monday, July 12th, um, 2021, 8.30, 2 a.m. Um, good morning, Joanne. We have Dan. Um, so this is a virtual meeting. Um, you know, we need to think about going back to in-person meetings, uh, I think perhaps in September. Um, but this will be a virtual meeting by Zoom and um, therefore um, anyone who wants to give comments from the public can do so by sending an email. I don't think we open this up to public to be on by Zoom. Um, so if anyone has public comments, either in the beginning or in the course of the meeting, please send them to my email address at kevin.moynihan at newcanacct.gov. But the first item on our agenda is the minutes of the meeting on May 10th. Um, any comments or corrections on those minutes? Hearing none, I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes of May 10, 2021 meeting. Move. Eddie Young? Neil second? Yep. All in favor? Aye. I hey, should have. I wasn't there. Can I vote? Well, no, I'll abstain. I'll should abstain. Mm -hmm. I, I should have I should have noted we have a new member of the committee. Amy, welcome. Amy. Hi guys. Uh, replacing our George Blavo, who um, we're gonna miss greatly. Um, but welcome, Amy, to this austere group, which meets at once a month. <laughs> we didn't meet in June. Um, that's why we have meetings for May and not, uh, I'm sorry, minutes for May and not June. So with that, um, again, comments from the public are welcomed by email um, and uh, we will read them if we receive any. So the first item on our next item on our agenda is the solar update for the New Canaan High School. And I think we have Mark Robbins here as well as Joanne and Dan. I see the uh, high school roof is actively being installed with lots of material over there in the parking lot. So look forward to hearing what the plan is for the high school on solar. So good morning, everybody. Um, I guess I'll, I'll uh, tag team this with Joanne and Dan and they could speak about the roof and the, uh, the Board of Ed's uh, process. And I can just give you kind of a highlight on some of the, I, I actually put together a quick PowerPoint. It's got a lot of pictures um, and kind of an update on CHP systems. So Amy, uh, we'll get you, this will be your crash course here to get you up to speed on the CHP projects as well. Um, so if, if uh, who's, can, can I share a screen? Yeah, okay, I think I can. Let me try. <clears throat> I guess maybe I'm the one that has to enable you. Yeah. Tiger, are you on, on here as well as a co-host? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm trying right now. Make co-host. Okay. Yes. Okay, Mark, you can go ahead. Okay. Uh, let me try that. Okay. So just going to click through a few visuals and um, let's see. Can can everybody see the screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, just want to share a little bit of hard-earned success, uh, which is uh, to, to, to preempt discussing about the high school solar system. West School Solar has, the installation is complete. Uh, there's a couple uh, electrical items being addressed in the next two days in the electrical service closet, but we, we have building permit we, and um, uh, it's been reviewed and uploaded to Power Clerk and we're expecting Eversource to uh, give us the green light to allow us to energize the system. So what, what we're looking at is the gymnasium in the rear of West School <laughs> off Ponis. And this is a medium size. This is a medium ZREC. ZREC stands for Zero Emission Renewable Energy Credit System. So it's receiving a credit from Eversource and Eversource installed a two-way meter, which is really beneficial for schools because they um, are not fully occupied on the weekends and in the summer, 
but they're still producing energy, which is sent back to the grid in, in return for a credit. Actually, the two-way meter and this uh, energy is sent back to the grid and the, the school receives a credit that they draw on throughout the year. So this PPA rate, 3.85 cents, is a flat PPA rate for 20 years. System size is 303 kWdc, which translates to the limit of 249 AC. That's the um, alternating current maximum for the medium size system. And it produces about 80% of the electricity the school needs. And um, I'm not sure, uh, Dan, where you guys are with LED lights and controls, but as, as that continues to evolve in the school, we'll probably get close to producing 90% with the goal of either another small system or, or more energy conservation measures resulting in 100% of the energy being produced by the solar system. An estimated long-term cost savings of about $900,000. Um, so this yeah, is- Yeah, that school was totally um, retrofitted with LED two years ago. Great, okay. So that's probably partially why we're, that so this solar system, which is limited to the building that row of buildings in the rear um, produces so much energy as a ratio of the total usage of the building because as Joanne mentioned, they've done a lot of energy conservation work on, on the inside of the building. Um, so here's a picture of the uh, section, the rear section facing the street but towards the back. And these panels were installed without ballast. They were installed with clips called S5 clips and they grab onto the standing sea metal roof. And it allows for a very low profile installation. And because there's no mechanical equipment on the roof, a very homogeneous, it's not fragmented. So it's a very homogeneous sort of carpet of solar panels. And two interesting things to note, this is the rear, uh, the front view of the rear, and this is the rear view of the rear. So you hardly notice it. It really looks like it's a part of the design intent of the building. The ridges, those standing seam ridges, actually allow for airflow underneath the panels to help cool them and keep them at an optimal temperature for energy production. As they heat up, they start to lose productivity. So it's a good thing to keep, have a little airflow underneath the panels and keep them cool. And what was kind of interesting, I was looking at them when they, when they arrived. These are actually bifacial panels. Um, we're only using the, the uh, top side of the panels, but they're bifacial, which means if they were installed in a carport si situation, they could produce energy probably 20% from the lower underneath neath side and 80% from the top. The reason the, the contractors selected bifacial panels is because they were, they were actually more available and they were tariff free. So the bifacial panels were not uh, subject to the tariff, which is burned off now. But so we, it, the economics are actually better to use bifacial panels, although you're only using one side of them. So um, I think that looks pretty good. So I was pretty happy about that. And um, Dan and his team were very involved in, you know, quality control and, and management uh, on site. But I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, so looking to get that energized this week. Um, so just talk a little bit, very high level. This is a aerial view of the high school. And um, Joanne and Dan can speak about the status of the roof project, which is going to result in the entire roof being rebuilt this summer, which is going to pave the way for an ambitious solar system. And um, I started to color this drawing last night, uh, give you an update on, on what, what we're planning. And I'm going to develop a proposal for the Board of Ed to review um, for next steps on this. but. The red box on the top left is a box around the uh, gym, uh, the gym extension, and we've applied for a small rec. Uh, the panels, uh, the rec actually corresponds to the uh, field entrance building. If you could see my cursor, and we would host the, the high school would host the panels on the roof of the gym extension, uh, but it would supply power to Dunning Field. So we've applied for a small, the value, the, so you can build a small system up to 99 kW. I think this would probably uh, accommodate and only need about 65 kW, 
on this roof. And this is the closest roof to that building that has the meter. So there, it would require trenching uh, through this section of the parking lot. The rec value is about $98 or, uh, per megawatt hour or 9.8 cents per kilowatt hour. And that system would be located there. And the yellow area in the center building is just conceptual space area that would be required to support a medium system the size that we just installed at West School. So this is the last year and, and they've closed the door for the, the, uh, the credit auction process. Um, we submitted and we're waiting to hear back. I'm expecting we're gonna hear this week if our bid was selected for a medium for the high school at $75 a megawatt hour or 7.5 cents kilowatt hour. We did not, we were not selected last year at 85. So we went in lower at uh, 75 or 7.5 cents per kilowatt hour. And fingers crossed, our bid will be selected. It's very competitive. They haven't put any money into the program significantly in the last couple of years. So they're sort of running on fumes. Um, it's year 10, this is year 10 of a seven year, of, a, of what was initially designed as a six year rec program and we're into year 10 only because the legislature hadn't really decided on a plan forward to replace it. Next year we expect that they're going to be releasing um, a program called a feed-in tariff and they're going to be doing away with the two-way meters. Uh, so we're, we're waiting to see what those economics look like. So if we're not selected this year we could still uh, participate in the feed-in tariff program next year but those rules have not been released yet. So concept here is, and at a high level, th this, this building, the high school uses more energy than any building in town, um, more, probably more like 2.6 um, million uh, kilowatt hours a year. And we could never over solarize it. So the concept here is we hope to secure the medium ZREC that in theory would cover this yellow area and then the green areas are areas that could accommodate a class one rack. So this hasn't been done before, but the concept I'm going to explore here would be a multimeter solar system where we'd end up with a blended price and we'd be securing the small racks in the red box, which are the uh, worth uh, 9.8 uh, uh, cents per kilowatt hour. In the yellow box, we'd put a medium solar system. Uh, if, we are, if we're lucky at securing the 7.5 cents a kilowatt hour co-payment. And then the green areas are just exploratory massing where we would apply for a class one rack. And this is a, of a lower value through the um, New England Power Authority, uh, NEPOOL. Uh, but we would end up with a blended rate. So we would apply basically for three rec meters and we would find a counterparty that wanted to invest in a system that would be a hybrid of three different solar meters at a blended rate. And hopefully we can approach a, a very ambitious size anywhere between 500 kW to a, milli, to a megawatt of power um, on the roof of the system. And look to couple it with the demand charge mitigation software, um, which we might be able to capitalize into the PPA. So the demand uh, management uh, software would use uh, predictive weather analytics to help modulate the HVAC system in the building um, and uh, identify when, when clouds are approaching and so forth, and it could set back or help pre-cool the building to try to soften some of those peaks of electrical demand that are driven by the chillers um, in the in the summer. So it's kind of where we are with uh, with this. So again, we're waiting this week to hear if we secure the medium Z rec. After they release the medium Z rec uh, winners, they will release the winners for the small Z rec, which we will definitely get because um, that's uh, prescriptive. And if we don't get the medium Z rec, we can absolutely apply for a small uh, for the building meter um, and we can go forward with these class one recs.
which would be the first time we're implementing class one recs. Um, and we haven't been approaching them because they're worth about $38 a megawatt hour or 3.8 cents per kilowatt hour. So they don't move the needle on their own, but as an adder to, to a system that has a medium DREC or a small, it does um, help bring up the, uh, the average REC value for the average REC proceeds. So it, I, Joanne, maybe do you wanna speak about where you are with the roofing process and? Sure. So um, fortunately we were able to go out to bid in February of this year, award the bid and procure all the materials that are needed to finish the job. Unlike a lot of um, other schools in the area who have roof projects who can't get the materials. So I think we're in a good place there. Um, the weather has not been um, overly cooperative with all the rain we've been having. So we are going to be probably going into the fall um, is what we expect right now. We're gonna um, hit all the roofs that require the uh, crane uh, because we don't want the crane in place while we have kids in school. Uh, we'd rather just be working with the lull. But overall, um, you know, the work is moving forward. Uh, right now we are in the yellow spot, just finishing that up in the next day or so. And then the crew is gonna um, go over to the space right behind the red box, finish that up and then go to the auditorium, cafeteria um, in that area. So we're gonna have constant updates to our board and to the superintendent because we do expect to be managing our way through this project as we get closer to school. Joanne, which, which areas don't require a crane? Um, the lower areas there where you can actually see that they're, you know, like in between um, the academic space in the gymnasium, there's a low roof there. Right. You can almost see them, uh, you know, they're the, basically the roofs that are not highlighted in Mark's, uh, Mark's right. picture so here. The back of the building where the mechanical rooms are um, in those areas. Okay, so, so most, the vast majority requires a crane then. Yes, yeah. And okay. it's the weight of the material that requires, you know, taking the weight off the roof. It's not so much bringing the, the materials off, but it's getting um, the existing materials off. And, and Joanne, just since Amy's new, can you just uh, t tell her sort of, um, you know, bring her up to date on the process The like I think it's a 30 year roof and, and how we're, we were analyzing it all. Uh, we, we had our engineers look at it to see what could support solar and just to, just a background on the project. Sure. Uh, so we have um, Tom de Blasi is our structural engineer. He worked closely with uh, Fishman who designed the, the roof, uh, Kim Winchild from Fishman. And they have identified the areas um, that can take solar. And it's a substantial amount of the roof. So we're very encouraged about that. Um, several weeks ago, Mark called and uh, we had a conversation and we talked about the blended approach, which you know, is actually a, a very um, clever way to go about this in terms of maximizing um, the potential for solar on the roof. So hopefully um, with all the strategies, uh, we're gonna prevail with the medium-sized rec and uh, move forward as soon as the roof is um, ready to be, um, you know, take on the solar. And Amy, you probably know um, from sitting on the finance board, we um, go out to bid prior to the uh, budget being approved on all of our roof projects so that we can have, um, you know, our purchasing um, orders, our contracts ready to go as soon as the budget's approved. Right. And uh, fortunately, it worked that way uh, quite well for us this year at the high school. So, we, so if the roof's a thirty-year roof, um, Mark, how long is the solar? Twenty year? Well, it's a good question. So, the deals we've been doing, the PPAs we've been doing, have been flat rate, fixed for twenty years. And uh, but now the convention, because the inverters and the warranties available for panels have shifted out to twenty-five years. Um, we're starting to do, we haven't done them for the New Canaan Board of Ed yet, but uh, at Waveney, uh, we're doing a 25 year PPA. So we can look at that. This, this, this building would be a candidate for, for a 25 year PPA because um, as Dr. Keating mentioned, it'll have a 30 year roof. So 
Just a so self- just, I'm sorry. Amy, so that, you know, our PPAs are for 20 years, but we have five year extensions. So at year 19, we'll evaluate. And if it makes sense to go another five years, uh, we definitely would do that. So, so Mark, you know, we, we know that, you know, roofs have a useful life and, you know, they get to the end and, and they're not, that's when you have to replace them. With solar, does the um, efficacy of solar diminish over time in terms of uh, the panels being able to produce optimal electricity? It does, yeah, mm -hmm. it does. I mean, it's not a lot, so in the PPA and we have a pretty robust maintenance agreement and uh, performance guarantees so in the arrangements that we've been executing with counterparties in New Canaan, they have minimum performance requirements. And for them to meet them, they're gonna to have to be updating or replacing the inverters every few years. Uh, but we do have language, there are teeth in these agreements whereby the counterparty, the, uh, the, the host, the Board of Ed, is relying upon a certain amount of energy production and savings. So, um, there's a requirement that the operator reinvest in the inverters, the panels, there's no moving parts. But at a high level, we, we project a half a percent a year degradation over time. So your system will be you know, 85%, 83% as productive on year 20 as it was on year one. Yeah, with, with, with the technology when it was put in, we, who knows what the technology is gonna look like in 20 years, but in terms of what was put in will be at 85% in uh, 20 years. So, I mean, all I'm saying is that, you know, 10 years from now, they may have a, a better technology, but we can't, we can't plan for that. Well, yeah. and we'll come back to you. What we talked about on the board of ed, because we, we did the first PPA is, you know, the, the, the deal is probably the, the PPA companies would come to us and want to renegotiate, you know, so you might, if you can get a better deal and it's better for everybody, you might be able, you might change it out then. Step out, okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so, so the things working against us in, right now in the solar world. Um, so labor's pretty flat uh, last year over this year, but the cabling, the wiring, the coppers shot right. way up. Panels have gone up 20% in the last mm -hmm. six weeks. Hopefully they'll come back down at supply and demand. But material costs, as you can imagine, are up. The federal investment tax credit, which is something that is enjoyed by the investor has stepped down from 30% down to 26. And um, it's holding there, but it was, the, the plan was for it to drop down to 24% next year. Not a huge issue, but material costs going up, tax credits going down, and the REX values are not as strong this year as they were last year or the year before. So the net of it is, we're gonna be paying more on our PPAs on a go forward basis. The West School, the savings at West School at 3.8 cents or at uh, South, uh, South School, which I think was about 4 cents, um, about $38,000 a year for the school. We're not going to get 3.8 cent uh, deals here. We'll probably get a blended average in the 7, 7 to 8 cent range. However, the system will be so much bigger that we project, even if you were at seven and a half cents on a megawatt size system, you know, double what, what we were paying recently, we would say because of the size of the system, this system would save the Board of Ed about $100,000 a year beginning in year one um, before adding any demand charge, say uh, demand mitigation software. So <laughs> that's kind of what we're, that's the aspiration at least. Mark, can I ask a, a silly question? What does the acronym REC stand for? Good question. So um, can't tell you that because then you you take my job. The, okay. the acronyms are the barrier to entry here. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so REC is renewable. Z in Connecticut nomenclature, Z stands for zero, zero emission. Um, unlike a fuel cell that is an L REC, that's a low emission. REC is Renewable Energy Credit. Okay. Thank you. So, so that's kind of where, so we're waiting to hear, uh, get our REC values in, and then, um, and then I've got to do a little research with Pura on the process, and then we would 
Um, but we're in great shape to go out to bid for a very ambitious system that would integrate two different meters and three different rec. Three, think of the recs as a credit or a, um, a coupon you know, that helps uh, cover part portion of the cost of the system. So jumping into, um, um, let's see if we could jump into uh, CHP. So um, um, Mark, before you do, let me make Mark. Mark. Yep. Before you do, I just want to ask uh, Joanne and Tiger, do we have another asphalt program coming this summer at the high school? We have yeah, one we're, scheduled. Right, we're out to bid right now for it. And that's, does that include the, the athletic wing over there where we would trench over to the Dunning meter? Uh, we did the back of the school already um, in, the jock, in the jock lot. Um, we had done that prior. The lower lot where the buses are, it's the lower lot, I guess you would call it the, uh, the eastern side and the northern sides are, are what we're looking at. And uh, depending upon their schedule, we might have to um, <clears throat> do it in three phases instead of two, <clears throat> in three pieces instead of so two. It's the farm road, it's the farm road student parking? Uh, yes, the band lot, which is the front lot, and then the bus lot, the eastern side, are the two that we have left. Okay. And the other thing is, as far as West School, you know, we did give up on our goal to have uh, Eversource bring gas to uh, West School. Um, and in lieu of that, we're going to get talk about the CHP projects for the town buildings and then ultimately for the high school. Um, but Eversource, it, that was just a a step too far for them to try to justify economically the bring gas to the West School. So Joanne and Dan are, are proceeding to convert uh, West School to propane, I believe. If I may, uh, Mark, can you update the committee on SACS because the, the solar project at SACS uh, quickly, because we have um, really hit a pretty serious bump in the road with that project. So on SACS, we're, the solar system there is planned to occupy the space over the cafeteria roof, the curved linear roof. Um, it's a white roof. It's a, a um, sort of like a plastic a TPO roof. So it's, um, it's going to be about 190 kW system, smaller. It's a smaller system, a smaller install than, than, uh, SAC, than uh, South School was or West School. And we have, we have an executed PPA with the same counterparty investor that, that did the, the West School uh, at the same similar rates. And uh, we have an interconnection uh, agreement offered by Eversource. The uh, issue has been, and material has been procured for the most part, but the uh, project developer is still trying to obtain uh, the engineering specifications to satisfy Tom de Blasi, the Board of Ed's third party uh, peer review structural engineer on some of the parts and pieces of the system. So we're using an innovative low profile racking system and some of the attachment hardware. Uh, Tom de Blasi, uh, the engineer, has asked to see the wind resistance calculations and the uh, structural um, uh, specifications of that material before signing off on its um, integrity. And um, we've, the, the uh, project developer has been struggling with the racking company's engineering firm to be responsive in turning around this data, the, these specifications. So we put a lot of pressure on, on our counterparty here. It's, um, they're, they're losing value and Joanne's made it very clear that if they're gonna do any work on the roof in terms of roof penetrations uh, to anticipate solar that has to be done before school starts. So we are uh, putting pressure on them and we're hopeful that they can resolve and come up with the necessary information to satisfy our structural engineer this week and um, it should take, it's only about three to five days of work, but we have to align a lot of stars to get that done before school starts so that we are um, 
you know, the, the pressure is on for that uh, contractor to perform. So the concern has been is that we've been um, seeking this information for the better part of, I want to say, four months. Okay. And uh, we'll need to make a decision in the next week or so as to whether or not we stay with this particular um, developer or we move on to the next lowest bidder. So we just wanted the committee to be aware of that. Yeah. Which, Mark, which going back to the high school, is there any explorations to carport solar uh, panels on top of a carport that might be erected at the high school? Would that ever be a, a consideration? Sure, we've considered carports over at the, the Waveney Pool parking lot, but carports are expensive. They've done them at Fairfield High School. Um, you, you don't get that much bang for your buck by, by building a structure. You can do it. I mean, you'll be still be saving money, but we just haven't thought it's, it's worth it when we have so much real estate to put it on roofs. Gotcha. Yeah, when, 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 so three years ago, we were actually looking at carports as a concept over the bus parking area before we had visibility that the roof was going to be redone. And the roof acts as the support. So the roof is ideal because we could build solar. From an investor's perspective, it costs them, let's say, $1.60 a watt installed if they're putting it on the roof. If they've got to build a core of footing, buy steel for a carport, yeah. and then put the solar on top of the carport, it costs them about two sixty dollars to $3 a watt to install it. So then, so in turn, they charge us more, and our savings is less. Um, but you're getting the benefit of uh, protected parking space. So that would be important for like a police department, perhaps. Sure. In my, Mark, for for carport, who's responsible for main maintaining the actual carport structure? Would that be like a, another structure that we in New Canaan wouldn't be responsible for, or is the solar provider the one who maintains it over time? Well, that's subject to however the agreement is drafted. And um, you know, typically they also have lights underneath them. So that's sort of another expense to light the parking spaces below. But the way we've been drafting the agreements is with pretty detailed maintenance requirements for whoever owns it. So think of the solar systems like a vending machine. We negotiate the price and where it goes and how it's maintained and what they stock it with, but it's owned and maintained by a third party. So. But it would be, I'm sure, uh, the obligation of the town or the Board of Ed to plow and plow underneath and around the carports. So that's a consideration. Thanks. Um, okay, Mark, why don't you proceed to CHP? So this is a picture just to give you a point of reference when we talk about CHP. It's a gas-fired engine that produces electricity and it's designed in, in, and that electricity is used on a constant 24-7 uh, basis in theory for the building. And it's providing electricity locally at the point of consumption. They call that distributed energy. So there's not a lot of loss, there's no loss of tr in the transmission lines. So it's a cleaner way of producing power at the point of consumption. And um, the gas that's fueling this generator receives a discount from uh, the utility because it, because it has the effect of reducing grid uh, constraints. So you're getting a discount on your gas and you also receive a credit, uh, uh, something called a class three credit. And the credit, which is metered, basically offsets your maintenance cost. And we installed one of these units at the DPW garage and one of them at the wastewater treatment plant building. And these are 35 kW Yanmar units made in Japan. In addition to the electricity they produce, which produces electricity at a, at a rate that's lower than we buy from Eversource, it uh, produces heat. And that thermal energy is free heat that we capture to heat the building. And the economics uh, are accelerated. The more of that heat you can use, uh, the better the payback. So they're producing free heat and electricity at a lower rate. Um, and these units, I'm really impressed with them. They, we've had them operating, Joe, I think now for about four months since we've had gas on site. And um, they've proven, uh, in my opinion, to be very robust, really well built, and pretty quiet. 
Um, so each one of these little panels you can remove and you can see parts of the equipment. The top third of this is the radiator. So if we're doing an in-building installation in a basement, for example, this top third is removed and, they, and that radiator can be, can be remotely sited to, so it's a lower head height. But the units are about two and a half feet deep, uh, about five feet wide and six feet tall. And this is just looking, removing one of the covers, you can see the engine, they use a four cylinder uh, marine based engine is a marine engine is designed to go for very long operating hours without requiring maintenance. It's got a giant oil reserve and um, they're really well built. All the space is accounted for. The interior, um, uh, interior component um, is represented in this blue frame and what's happening inside and the, the way we've been installing this equipment is by fabricating all the interior components offsite and then delivering this rack or frame to the job site. And this rack can be five feet tall, it can be 10 feet tall. It's designed to fit the space. And this rack contains all the other equipment, the heat exchanger, the pumps, the glycol reserve. And it shows up at the same time as a CHP unit, minimizing the amount of interconnection work um, that's required. So this is an example of the rack that's installed uh, on the inside of the building over at the DPW garage. So those are the two components. Um, so we started to look at very preliminary economics to look at installing one of these units. These are 35 kW units. Um, so 35 kW unit will produce about 300,000 kilowatt hours a year. That'll produce the same amount of electricity as the West School solar system. Plus it produces a lot of free heat. So we looked at, we, we're running numbers right now, uh, first cut at installing a system at the town hall and one at the Lapham Community Center. And the net of it is at the town hall, a CHP unit would produce, at running at 95% uptime, would produce about 61% of the electricity required by town hall. And that number may be more like 75, because I think it's been less than a year. I don't think I have a full year of data since you guys did the LED lighting at Town Hall. So Joe, you could correct me if I'm wrong on that, but if, if it's been less than a year since the LED lighting has been done, it'll, the, the production will be more like 75% of the electric requirement for Town Hall, and it'll produce just about 70% of the thermal requirements for the building resulting in a 6.9 year payback. Uh, that's before uh, we value engineer these numbers. At the same time, it's before any contingency or consulting fees. So I think you're looking at about a seven year payback um, for an installation at the town hall. And that system would be split between an installation in the basement and we'd remotely locate the radiator uh, on an exterior vault. Um, outside just so that we can maintain the head height requirements. The installation of a CHP, so I, I feel very, it's a very, the, the town hall is a very good site candidate, very good payback for installing CHP. And I think gas is coming there this summer. Um, gas is not yet to Lapham Center, but if and when gas is installed at Lapham Center, um, we ran the numbers and it, it actually overproduces electricity. So we're actually dumping electricity, um, uh, not getting full credit uh, at, at right now. If we were to buy a, a 35 kW unit, install, install it at the Lapid Community Center, um, it, is a, it, is, it run at 95% uptime, it's overproducing electricity. We're producing 140% of electricity load requirement for the building. And we're producing 95% of the thermal load, which means that the boilers are hardly used. So that's the good thing. Each, each one, installing each one of these 35 kW units is environmentally equivalent to taking 25 cars off the road permanently. So again, I just wanna mention that there's a, there's a big uh, environmental benefit uh, for the installation. Okay, so what does it mean? It means that unless we can find a use for the excess electricity at Lapham, we have a payback that's greater than 10 years. Good, but not great. However, 
if we connect the electric, the electric, if we um, combine the electric meters for Lapham and the uh, water field, uh, water tower field lights, the soccer field lights. So it's about a hundred foot run. So if we assume for argument's sake, and this is part of my next step to get bids and design, but at hundred dollars a foot, a $50,000 $50, cost increase would allow us to, to combine the electric meter at Lapham Community Center and the field lights. That would allow us to use that extra 40% of electricity that we're, we, in this case, we're dumping to power the field lights. And that would reduce the payback to something in the order of an eight year payback versus a 10 year payback. Hey, Mark, could you put car chargers there? Yeah. You could put car chargers. You could, yep. Just well, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know, to you EV could put charge, like car chargers, chargers and charge people for the use. You know, and charge them for the use. Yeah. So it's a way of. Uh, so that's interesting because what's happening with these small K, these small units, these 35 kW uh, systems, is up to 50 kW. You can get a net meter. So in connection, we have a net meter at town hall because you have solar we could install a net, we can apply for a net meter at Lapid Community Center and we can get a credit. The problem is that credit's only good for a year and then they cash you out at the end of the year at wholesale rates that are like three and a half cents. So you've got to use your credit within the year. But if you had something like an additional parasitic load, like carport, like car chargers or the field lights, you could monetize that extra energy and um, so, so that's kind of where we are with the, um, so c these small CHP units get the benefit of net metering. If we did install one at Lapham and you ran it full time, we have this surplus of electricity. And so that's our next step is to determine what's the cost of connecting loads to the field lights or car chargers, and then what's the, the net payback. Mark, what's the history of these units in their ability to, in fact, achieve a 95% runtime? Well, uh, Yanmar has been making this similar technology for about 100 years. Um, they're very prevalent in hospitals and um, uh, towers, uh, St. Regis in New York City. Um, there, um, I think 95% uptime is, is realistic. Okay. Yep, is realistic. And, um, but that's a very good question. Stuart, sure, remember Aegis, the company that um, installs these, um, is monitoring these 24 seven from uh, remotely. And, and they, um, there's, if there's any problem, they have someone within two hours as a service maintenance person. Mm -hmm. So. so another thing that, that I want to model as our next step is we sort of refine the economics here. And this is all contingent on Eversource bringing gas um, to the site. But this would certainly compel them to bring gas to the site. Um, is that if we throttled back the runtime at Lapham, because right now at 95% runtime, run how I model this, as I mentioned, we're dumping 40% of the electricity. But the next step would be either figure out the cost benefit of connecting loads, those field lights, and or model it at like a 75 or 65% runtime. Um, because uh, we are overproducing electricity. And if we throttle that back, we would reduce our maintenance charge and our consumption of gas. So it would be an interesting sensitivity analysis to look at. So this is just an aerial view of town hall. Um, and it's and it's dated, it doesn't have our solar panels. So, uh, but the red box on the left indicates uh, is really the boiler room where we'd be locating the unit inside. And then that small rectangular red box on the right is, is roughly where the radiator would be located. But at grade, there's a metal grate. And if you look down, it's like an air duct we would drop the radiator into that space. Um, you know, Joe has asked us to look into 
uh, the decibels and make sure we're not creating like an echo chamber and that it's going to be reverberating. So we've got to do a, a little bit of due diligence on that. But the vault is a perfectly legitimate place to locate that, you know, that heat exchanger. Um, the, again, that's just an aerial view of the town hall. And then this is an aerial view of the Lapham Center. Um, the red box on the left indicates where the unit would be placed outside uh, adjacent to the, to the wall, uh, to the into the boiler room. And that's sort of more of the utility area of Lapham Center. And then again, if we wanted to connect the meters, we'd be going up and around and we'd be crossing this parking lot. And it's just about 500 feet uh, to get over to the field lights. Um, but that's, uh, that's a concept there. Mark, it's Penny. Um, you've got to be careful. You've got um, classes going on right at under those windows <laughs> uh, from a sound uh, interruption standpoint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Penny, Penny, you, you ought to go over and listen to the operation. It, 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 the, uh, I did. I did. It's very quiet. So there is a there is at least one chiller uh, fan coil unit out there right now. There's, I mean, a compressor out there, maybe two, but it is something to to look at. Um, they've actually gotten quieter as they've broken in. I was there yeah. on Friday um, to restart one, and um, it worked really well. And it's, I was surprised at how much quieter they've gotten. If you could move it slightly to the north, closer to the kitchen, it doesn't, um, it's not as, um, 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 you know, much, much of an effect on classroom. Interesting. Okay, we had actually looked at that location early on. So I, I didn't know, I didn't even think about what was going on inside the building. Uh, that location, Penny, is closer to the boiler run. So the, it, it could be done either, either place. You got some more. Yeah, uh, we're a little bit more sensitive to it because when they did the air conditioning units um, in the uh, south wing there, it's right under a classroom. And uh, even though your windows are closed because you got the AC on, you can really hear it. And, and, it's, and it's disruptive. So just be mindful. Thank you. So uh, let's transition to the idea of um, the high school. We will never be able to ne uh, generate enough electricity with solar. And um, so the idea would be uh, for next year, looking at what kind of CHP Joanne and Dan could bring to the high school um, and how we would plan to do that. That would have to be in the budget process for starting in January. Exactly, yeah. So we do plan to bring uh, forward a proposal to the Board of Ed and then on through the process uh, for the high school. And we'll have a lot more information at that time based on the solar uh, projects that we're gonna put together as to how to size it. So yes, definitely we do plan to bring that forward. Okay, Mark is also working with the YMCA now to uh, do uh, CHP at, at, at the Y, which is probably the Screams the loudest in town for using CHP because of the two pools, and um, and I believe Mark has also ordered solar for the library. We have applied for a, a small system for the library. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, I think I think that wraps it up. Any further questions for Mark on CHP or? Hey, hey Kevin. In general, um, it, as these projects move forward, like assuming it, it, we go forward with you know, the library, um, the library, the high school, et cetera. What percentage of the town buildings will we have at some level of- um, Depends on how you count buildings, uh, Amy. <laughs> yeah. Including, excluding school buildings, you know, all, you know, the buildings within- Well, that actually, Mark, buildings. that would be a good project to, to <clears throat> uh, give us all the, the savings across the buildings, both school yeah. and town buildings. And well, we, we spoke about that. Remember we talked about a, a sort of a project flow chart. Yeah. So now it's all independent projects, but when we come out, what will be the average of this or that or one system compared to another timing of, of the contracts, you know, all that. So uh, I, I think the monitoring, especially for the budget process, I can't believe I'm saying the words budgeting process <laughs> as, as the first time, but it's, it's back. But that would be really the place to have everything, all the projects listed, uh, the exposures, all the factors we want to look at in one place. Yeah. 
And, and I was I was focusing, Neil, uh, surprisingly, less on the budget, more in terms of the environmental footprint, because I remember when we started talking about this, you know, Fairfield, you know, had knocked the ball out of the park in terms of uh, renewable energy. And it's it would be good to know um, how New Canaan is coming up the curve on that. I think people would be pleased and, and like to know that. Yep. Good point. And this is all part of the Connecticut 10 year uh, energy saving strategy and converting to gas. Um, distributing out the energy production around around the state so it's great so out of curiosity have we talked to our reps you know uh lucy or will about what the state is planning for next year in, in the budget uh you know for renewable energy for solar do we have any idea what they're going to try and go for well uh you know we're coming up in the 10-year anniversary of the uh of, of malloy's 10-year strategy and and i think what, what i've heard is they, they plan to try to renew it Ever, from Eversource. Eversource hopes they, they plan to renew it. So. And Penny, I think I remember hearing the and, uh, uh, governor's budget proposal talking, you know, generally about continuing forward on this um, energy, better energy utilization. Right, right. So I thought we would probably have a proposal yeah. from them. Okay, turning to Tiger. Tiger is, has been on vacation as I was last week, so I hope maybe we can get just a quick update on other capital projects. Um, as you know, the Police Department Building Committee last week met, met Thursday and looked at the uh, uh, plan for renovating South Avenue, if that's what the way we're gonna go. And that was a very interesting meeting. Um, uh, we have some choices to make coming up here in Jul July and August on that. And Tiger, what else do you have on a quick update on the capital projects? Okay, quick update. Um, so we are in the middle of our paving program. We uh, Crack sealed 31 roads. Those are, we crack seal every five years. So 31 roads were completed. We're about to uh, do our Cape sealing and micro thin overlays. Those are done in mid July. Once the weather starts to cooperate, uh, we'll be doing 11 roads there. We've uh, paved eight of 11 roads so far of our 2021 local roads list. Uh, the only three that are remaining are Mortimer, Brinkerhoff and Lockwood. And right now there's a sidewalk installation going on there. Once the sidewalks are further along, the contractor will come in and repave um, those three roads and take those off the books. Those are arguably the worst roads in town. Um, Eversource is going to be milling and paving 123 through town from Lakeview Avenue all the way into Norwalk to uh, take care of that resiliency project that they had done last year. Um, and they're currently working out in front, uh, trying to feed gas down to uh, a new development at the corner of Locust and Forest. It's probably got another week left there. Once they're done, their aquarium is going to come in and start their water main work in town. Uh, it's going to be a two-fold approach. They're finishing the main work that they did down at Church in Maine. They have two nights left um, tonight and tomorrow night to do, uh, do that work. And then they're going to be putting in a new main on Elm Street from Park to Grove. And then the main that will come down Cherry, uh, take a left on the Main Street and come Main Street to Locust Avenue. That work will be all at night. The work on Elm Street will be during the day. And then we're hoping that once Eversource finishes their work out in front here, they'll come into the back of the town hall and start bringing the main into the back to service um, some of the Elm Street businesses and um, town hall. And, uh, and other buildings in this uh, off the parking lot in the rear. So that kind of gives you an idea of where everybody is. And then the work on 123, the drainage work that was done is uh, they have two signs left to install and the, sign, the project will be complete. Um, it's uh, basically substantially complete. They have two permanent signs that need to be uh, put in and, and that, that job will be over as well. That was a state job. Tiger, did you mention Main Street with the Furian? Yes. Um, I noticed they did some repairs after they came and visited um, on Main Street, which has improved somewhat, but uh, still pretty bumpy. Right. Room. The uh, I did not. The uh, well, the, the thought is that um, we're waiting for four more houses to be hooked up to gas um, in the stretch from Oak Street to Farm. Uh, so basically, down the hill and all the way out to Farm Road. I um, uh, I walked the entire street about two weeks ago and knocked on every single door trying to see who wanted gas and who didn't um, just to facilitate and expedite that work so that we could look to repave uh, 
Main Street from Oak to Farm um, in either late August or early September is uh, is the goal is to get uh, everyone on gas that wants it and then pave the road and be done with it at least from that stretch the upper stretch from Oak into town is a little bit better condition and uh, is still being worked on by Aquarian on this new phase of uh, water main installation. So that uh, I think that gives you everything that we've we have going on so far. Any questions for Tiger? I think we had no flooding in any of our buildings last uh, Friday, which was not in any of our buildings. No, Good had, uh, some houses had problems, but yeah, I, I think Waveney had some tough, tough uh, problems with some of the trails with all the rain. Yeah, we lost we lost some trails and. Uh, yep. St. Aloysius Church lost their, um, or school lost their boilers uh, because of the South Avenue flooding problem, which I didn't really understand oh. exists, which is also a problem for the library. So we got to mm. look at that. Hmm. With that, we're coming up on 9.30. I think we've covered a lot. And um, any, any questions or, I don't know whether we perhaps should plan on an August meeting and just skip to September. Um, uh, and then how do people feel about, we can continue to zoom, do Zoom meetings until, until next April. The legislature passed this legislation that allows uh, hybrid and, and Zoom, uh, I'm sorry, hybrid, what do they call it? Uh, virtual meetings until next April, um, when hopefully they're gonna pass further legislation that would uh, accommodate non-in-person meetings. But um, I do think, you know, how do people feel about getting back to in-person in September? Or would you rather do Zoom? It's convenient for a lot of people to do Zoom, obviously. Yeah. Zoom nice. is convenient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is convenient. Zoom is convenient if it's well, working well. I mean, at least, or at least hybrid. Otherwise, I think, uh, you know, I think you also get more, you know, it's easier for uh, Joanne and Dan to come when we're talking about the Board of Ed projects and much more efficient time-wise that way as well. Yeah, yeah, I think you get more participation with, with, with hybrid and... Uh, I, I just think with Zoom too, it's interesting. Like if you're in a room and you're like at a long table, the people at the end, you have like, you don't feel like you connect with them at all. I mean, this way we're the Brady Bunch. We're talking to everybody, you know? So um, I, 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 I find it interesting. Like it's great to see people, but in some ways I feel like I communicate. I feel more in touch with everybody in the process because I, I can see them. I'm not looking down at the end of the table. All right. Well, tomorrow night, the Board of Finance will be in person. Yeah, maybe with two members remote and um, the PNC Commission is having a special meeting tomorrow night by Zoom, I believe. So it's going to be a busy week. Yeah. Um, thank you all for your. We'll let you know whether we do an August meeting. I, I, we perhaps can dispense of it given it'll be the month of August. Yeah. You know, just a comment on that solar thing. It really is coming together to look like a good. So there's really a lot happening. So it's impressive. We were all critical a year ago in the, in the progress and I think there really has been progress made and I know it's there's more to go and I know it's piecemeal it's here and there but we can get better but still worthy of some praise and I'm very sorry we're not going to bring gas to West Road I'm to, to oh, Bonus Ridge Road I know I had that gas line going right through my yard <laughs> oh well I, but I, I, I Pony uh, Piggy Chain and what Neil said I mean I think this is something that should you know the progress on this should be put forth to Board of Finance, Town Council, so that people realize, you know, the very strong progress we're making in getting towards a better better and better cost energy system for yep. town. And Amy Tiger and, um, and others are working on the, uh, on the uh, EV chargers. Um, and I think Joanne and the Board of Ed are working on EV chargers too. So, so we're working on that front as well. Well, being a newbie on this, I found this very interesting meeting, so. Very good. good. I would take a motion to adjourn. Move. Uh, Neil moved and Stuart seconded. All in favor? We'll see you uh, soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thanks.